This is it, human stem cells being injected into a pig's embryo. This is the first time uh, that we see human cells actually can survive in this stage of the pig embryos. Pig monkey hybrids, and they, they've successfully <laughs> made these pig monkey hybrids, and you know. They're... What do they look like? When the genes of an animal species get fused with the genes of another animal, the results are always appalling. Outlandish crosses, wild matings, and failed experiments. Let's explore the unexpected side of nature, showcasing some of the scariest hybrid animals. Human stem cells being injected into a pig's embryo. This pig, the first known chimera. Scientists at the Salk Institute have taken a bold step. They tried to understand the potential of mixing human and animal DNA. And instead of beginning with pigs carrying monkey DNA, they went straight to pigs with human DNA. Yes, you heard right. They put the human DNA into the pig's embryo. No, not like that. Why all this nonsense? Well, the goal behind this was to grow human organs inside animal hosts, just like our Chinese scientists did with monkeys and pigs. This experiment involves merging human cells with pig embryos, which are then carried by a pig for four weeks. The catch? This kind of genetic mixing is controversial and off limits for public funding in the US. Only private donors, perhaps with dreams of sci-fi like creatures are backing this venture. Imagine a pig hosting a bit of humanity for three to four weeks. Zebroids. Now getting back into the weird territory of hybrid animals, we have these, the zebroids. Zebroids aren't just one animal, but a group name for any animal that came from a zebra in part. For example, there's the Zorse, which happens if you allow a male zebra and a female horse to make love with each other. Then you have a Zorse. Similarly, a cross of a zebra and a female donkey makes a zonkey. It's not all here in the department of zebroids. We've have Zuni Hebras, Zetland, and wait, the Zebrul. Woof, out of breath, but not out of zebroids. I'm being honest, it's just weird to look at. It's hard to rationalize that kind of fusing though it does make something unique. Is it all worth it? You'd have to imagine it wasn't easy to get these animals together in the first place, but life just finds a way, right? Mon Pig. So far, we've looked into the true hybrids with two parents of different species, but this one? It's a little more than just weird. In 2019, Chinese scientists were able to successfully breed a pig with monkey genes in a lab environment, trying to make the first monkey pig. The goal of this hybridization was to grow monkey organs within the body of pigs. The hope was that experiments like these would eventually allow scientists to grow human organs and animals for transplant purposes. But sadly, we still have a lot to learn, as the two monkey pigs sadly passed away within just one week of being born. If you think this whole thing sounds a little creepy, well, it's just the tip of the gene berg. Jag Lion. Hello, birthday girl. Jaguars have ruled over America for ages, while the lion has been the king of the African continent. Well, one day both of them decided we should expand our empires. Sounds exciting, let's do it. This happened on April 9, 2006 at the Bear Creek Sanctuary in Canada, when a lioness named Lola gave birth to two healthy cubs, Jahazira and Tsunami, with a male black jaguar by an unintended mating. The scientists came up with a new name for a unique species, jag lions. <laughs> Quite a name. Anyway, jag lions are magnificent animals, wherein Tsunami is spotted while Jazira is melanistic just like its father. These two buddies grew up together and are pretty awesome looking creatures with the best features of a jaguar and a lion. Unfortunately, they don't fit in with either species in the wild and can't mate with their kind. So they're one of a kind. Maybe the dream of expanding the empire didn't go as planned. Belgian Blue In the world of cattle, there was a male steer who stood out from his herd and his name was Nickers. The name may sound a bit, um, nothing, 
This massive creature stood out in the world, towering at 6 feet 4 inches and 2,800 pounds. A real heavyweight. But wait. Enters the Belgian Blue. This super cow makes knickers look lightweight. These man-made marvels, standing around 5 feet tall at the shoulder and weighing over 2,800 pounds, are muscle-bound powerhouses. Originating from Belgian cattle bred with British shorthorn bulls in the 19th century, they boast a rare double musculature trait. But here's the beef. Although these super cows are a butcher's dream because they yield 80% more beef than regular cows, there are some ethical concerns. Their excessive muscles can hinder movement and comfort, sparking debates about the morality of their breeding. So whether you prefer your beef with bulk or a bit more bovine agility, the super cow has certainly left a hoof print on the farming world. Tigans. But jaguars aren't the only animals lions have mated with. They've made love with tigers too. Yes, you heard it right, lions and the tigers. The fusion of these two ferocious animals gives us the tigans. Tigans are like magical blends of male lions and female tigers with the body of a lion and the stripes of the tiger. They exhibit visible characteristics of both of their parents and do not grow taller than either of them. Sadly, due to genetic switches, they often face health issues and do not survive their early ages. They are quite rare, with fewer than 100 known individuals worldwide, most of which are kept in zoos. Despite their rarity, tigans are a sight to behold with their stunning appearance that is hard to ignore. Racklehan. Okay, brace yourself for this hybrid. It's not your typical sweet looking bird. Nope, it's more like a feathered rebel, a psychopath. Rackelhan is truly an amazing bird that you would be extremely lucky to ever see in the wild. It's a mixture of female caper collie and black grouse. The Rackelhan is like the love child of these two, blending the best of both worlds. It's got the majestic flair of the caper call and the cool sleek vibe of the black grouse. Feathers that play in both shades, a unique mix of calls. How come such an amazing bird can be a serial killer? Rackelhan is a massive and awesome looking bird. The only problem is, forget the chirpy stereotype, this one's a bit of a renegade like it's stepped out of a serial killer's lair. It's got the personality of Ted Bundy. Seriously, this bird is a bit of a psycho, super aggressive to pretty much everything, including people. And get this, it's been caught attacking and beheading male black grouse. Talk about taking aggression to a whole new level. Got goosebumps? There is good news that the Rackelhans are unable to reproduce, so hopefully these psycho killer birds will not take over the world anytime soon. Life's full of surprises, even in the bird world. Spider Silk Goat So I've been checking out some pretty wild animal crossbreeds lately. Some of them are pretty weird, but others are just fascinating. But what about creating hybrids for a specific purpose? I'm not talking about transplanting organs into different animals or anything like that. I'm talking about something even more unusual, silk. I know it sounds a bit strange, but trust me, it'll all make sense soon enough. You know, it's kind of wild, but turns out spiders can spin silk that's tougher than steel. The catch is that spiders take forever to make enough of it on their own. So to speed things up, scientists got a bit creative and brought goats into the mix, not like, Oh no, goats! But they infuse some special DNA to get the silk production going faster. Science doing its thing, you know. The scientists think by doing this, we can get a lot more silk on the regular that'll be used to make bandages, body armor, and more. It's all a little bit crazy, but you have to admit, it's also a bit clever. After all, we've made the Goats of Steel. Growler Bear. Back in 2006, an odd-looking bear was shot down by a licensed hunter in the Canadian Arctic. The hunter examined the body. Soon, terror crawled its spine as it was not a polar bear he had been licensed to kill for, but a grizzly bear. At least, he thought that at first. After some DNA testing and head scratching, it dawned upon them that the body was not just of a grizzly bear, but it was a polar bear too. Confusing, right? 
Well, according to the reports, the body that was hunted down belonged to a growler bear, a cross between a female polar bear and a male grizzly bear. So how did it happen? Aren't they different territorial species? Well, the reason behind this is a little sadder. These two species came closer due to climate change. As we know, polar bears are running out of space in Arctic regions due to global warming. So they've been moving south into the grizzly regions where they might interact with grizzlies and end up producing growler bears. Geep In 2014, Arizona, the owner of My Petting Zoo, noticed that her female sheep was pregnant. But how is this possible? Because they had no male sheep at that time, they only had male goats. Wait a minute, Michael, he must have done this. Michael! So get this, that sheep gave birth to a geep. Yep, you're right, another dumb name for a hybrid. Why do they always have to mash up two names to create a hybrid? It's so unoriginal. I mean, seriously, we could do better than that. How about the woolen hoof, or maybe the gringoat, or even the snorts sheep? What do you think? Ah, I think we should stick with the geep. The little guy was super healthy, and you know what's really cool? This animal has mixed genes, so it has a face and legs like a goat, but wool like a sheep. It's wild seeing how the genes mix like that. Indeed, a goat in sheep's clothing. Wolfen There's another documented case of an unplanned union, this time between a whale and a dolphin, just like the jag lions. So there was this male false killer whale called Anau, and this female Atlantic bottlenose dolphin named Punel. Well, they got together and ended up producing a baby named Kakamului. Crazy, right? These wolfins are super weird looking. They have heads like false killer whales, but their fins and noses are more like dolphins. And don't even get me started on those teeth. They give me the creeps. Their color is also a steely gray, which is an interesting halfway point between the coloration of their parents. Before Kamalu was born, park handlers couldn't imagine a romance blossoming between her parents. Then how did it happen? Maybe both of them just looked at each other and thought, why don't we try something new today? Though extremely rare, wolfins have been spotted in the wild, so the two species have more in common than we first thought. Love is limitless and transcends all boundaries, no doubt. Narluga Have you ever seen a cross between a unicorn and a whale? Just kidding, it's impossible! But we have a story for you in which two different species came closer to each other and resulted in an almost mythical product. In the 1980s, a Greenlandic hunter caught three odd-looking whales and was very puzzled by their appearance. He kept one of the skulls in his house, until after several years he gave this skull to the Natural History Museum of Denmark. Scientists studied the skull for many years and were stunned after finding out that it was a hybrid between a female beluga and a male narwhal. These creatures have features of both of their parents, with a wider and longer beak than beluga and several horizontal teeth similar to tusks and narwhals. This creature is extremely rare, in fact. The only evidence we've ever found is the same skull found in the 1980s. The DNA analysis of this skull proved one such couple created a rare hybrid species, and the University of Copenhagen confirmed it by analyzing genetic materials from its teeth. This is the only known evidence of Narluga. Sounds pretty mythical, isn't it? Dozo Let's have another clever mix, presenting the Dozo. This hardy, also known as Yakoi, is a crossbreed of a Tibetan yak and domestic cows. The toughness of a yak and the coolness of a cow gives us the dozo. They've got the best characteristics of their parents. They're tough and strong, and at the same time, their milk is delicious. And the meat? Oh, don't ask me of that juicy and tender meat. These features have attracted Asians, and their popularity in Asia is booming. Dozos can reach up to 5.5 feet in height, and they can weigh a staggering 1,300 pounds making them a lot larger than both Tibetan yaks and cows. They're covered with a long, shaggy coat, just like their father, and they have a variety of colors. Black, brown, and they can even have white colors. Quite a canvas, isn't it? You might think these creatures need tons of care and attention, but guess what? 
They're way more low maintenance than you'd imagine. All they need is a lot of pasture, nothing else. Plus, they can carry huge loads across the mountains. That's why they are perfect for supporting tracking and hiking. This thing is a true all-in-one solution. Oh, how can I forget this? A dung cake. Ha, don't expect it to be delicious. It's yaku poop. The Asians have found a way to use its poop too. They dry it up and use it as a source of fuel. Asians are too genius, uh, maybe. Green Sea Slugs Have you ever heard of a solar-powered creature? Yes, you heard right. No, it's not a bluff. You don't believe? Then look at this. Meet this living lettuce, the Green Sea Slug, or the Eastern Emerald Elysia. What a fancy name it is! Well, this name suits its personality. They can be found at all along the eastern coast of the United States. These creatures can grow up to two and a half inches long and can live up to a year. So what makes it a hybrid? Look at that green waving frock. It's not your run of the mill green, it's like a special edition. Well, this greedy sea creature has consumed so much algae over the centuries that it has now become a part of it. Because of this, it can now produce its chlorophyll which allows plants to convert sunlight into energy, making it the world's first plant-animal hybrid. These little fellas are like the ocean's fashion statement, strutting around in shades of green that you'd envy. Who knew slugs could be so stylish? Savannah Cat Meet the Savannah Cat, another Marvel hybrid. These domestic cats carry a wild side, boasting a significant percentage of African serval blood. Not just pretty faces, they're intelligent, active, and playful. But here's the big cat twist. Literally, they can tip the scales at 40 pounds and stand four feet tall. Imagine having a mini leopard as a pet. What sets them apart? For one, they're water enthusiasts, not your typical cat trait. Forget your loneliness, savanna cats are all about forming deep, loyal bonds with their owners. And these cats are quick learners, a feline companion with a dog's heart. If you're planning to bring one home, hold on to your wallet. A first-generation Savannah kitten can set you back up to $20,000. Also, prepare for a raw meat diet, chicken or beef. Are you up for this big wild-hearted companion? Wolf Dog Have you heard of the Wolf Dog? If not, hear from me. It's this amazing creature that's a mix of a wolf and a bunch of dogs. I mean, one dog. Its fur is all shiny and silvery, kind of like a wolf, but with crazy color variations and patterns that show off its fun and playful personality. And don't even get me started on those eyes. They're like a mix of wise and mischievous, totally capturing the spirit of both a wolf and a dog. Now, here's the deal. This unique buddy isn't throwing a welcome party for strangers. Nope, it's got that aggressive protective vibe and might show it with a growl or two. It's like a furball with the spirit of a lone wolf, but the loyalty of your best dog. Koi Wolf In a new PBS Nature documentary this month, you're going to learn all about a new hybrid species, the Koi Wolf. Talking of wolf dogs, meet a new species of the canine world, the Koi Wolf. It's a hybrid fusion between a wolf and a coyote. And before you rage against the humans and shout what idiot scientist had this idea, it wasn't a human creation at all. Actually, it's kind of like those growler bears, if you think about it. When Europeans started settling in America, they cut down a lot of trees and hunted a ton of different animals. This was great for the settlers, but not so great for the eastern gray wolves. Their homes were getting destroyed. Their food was getting scarce, and people were even setting poison traps for them. As a result, the eastern gray wolf population started to decline quickly. In this state of sophilism, Wolf looked at the coyote and said, Can you help me through the grief of losing my pack? Why not? Let's have a family together. So when coyotes and wolves got together and had babies, the outcome was a bit more wild than anyone would have liked. A creature that desires hunting like a wolf with the boldness of coyotes. Koi wolves like to keep their distance from humans, staying away and not showing much of themselves. Blood Parrot Fish 
We've already talked about some cool hybrids, but have you heard of one that mixes in another fish? Sounds pretty wild. Meet the blood parrot kicklid fish. So check it out. This fish is a mix of three kinds of fish, the Midas kicklid, the red-headed kicklid, and the blood parrot kicklid. However, the combination of genes from these fish has made it difficult for the new fish to survive. For example, its mouth is so tiny that it can't even eat what it needs to stay alive. And crazy, right? For this reason, some activists want to stop breeding it altogether and make sure it's not sold in pet stores. But the thing is, this fish is a bit of a survivor. It's not the easiest fish to live on its own. Yes, they can have that bold kicklid behavior where they act like I'm the tank boss and come up to the glass to beg for food. But boy, does it look unique. Plus, it's a great team player in the fish ecosystem, so people want to keep it around. Zubrin No, it's not some mythical beast or deadly creature. It's a hybrid of a cow again. Back in the 20th century, someone in Poland had the genius idea to mix a bison and a cow, and voila, the Zubrin was born. Now, this name isn't just randomly picked. It was officially chosen in 1969 from a bunch of suggestions sent to a Polish magazine during a contest. These creatures are like the outdoor living champs, and they're no small fries. We're talking about males hitting a whopping 1,200 kilograms and ladies tipping the scale at 800 kilograms. But here's the twist. For a long time, they couldn't really be considered a species because, well, the guys were born sterile. Yes, no reproducing action happening there. Fast forward to 1958. Polish labs decided to crack the code on Zubrin reproduction, and after 16 years of tinkering, they did it. First Zubrin born to a Zubrin mom. It was a massive achievement. Beefalo All right, so let's talk about this interesting combo called the beefalo. It's not your everyday domestic animal. The folks breed it on purpose for its meat. I'm talking about some seriously tasty, tender, and satisfying meat here. No offense, vegans. Here's the deal. Farmers mix a regular old domesticated cow with a female American bison, and boom, you've got yourself a beefalo. The cool thing is these guys can keep the family going. They're pretty good at making more of themselves, which isn't always a given with newly bred creatures. So in a nutshell, it's all about getting more beef on the table. They have the genes within them to make better meat. They produce leaner, more flavorful meat like bison, but are more pliant and easier to raise like domestic cattle. As you can guess, some mates are not exactly in favor of this juicy and tender meat. Well, this may be right for reasons that farmers essentially made a new species of animals just to murder them? All to make more money and products? But if we take a look at our earlier actions, we've already made broilers and layers just for the products and profits. It's a slippery slope and not the only cattle animal to fall into that category, which is why crossbreeding is so controversial in the eyes of many in the world. Where does one draw the line? Moulard. We've come across some of the strange hybrids out there, but this? No one could have imagined that a duck could have a hybrid too? Yes, you're right, this quirky creature has a hybrid too. Meet the mullard. It's a result of a domestic duck getting cozy with a domestic mallard. Naughty little ducks. Now, you won't find these guys just hanging out in the wild because, you know, the hybrids. The mullard is kind of like a designer duck, bred specifically for its meat and, um, the fouille grass, French dish. We don't get into the ethics of that. Anyway, duck meat is a hit worldwide, and apparently moulard meat is too. The catch? These birds are born sterile, so keeping the moulard population going involves a bit of duck matchmaking, so they're mostly bred for their delicious meat. Now the question arises, if they're bred at that scale, then why hasn't anybody laid eyes on one? Maybe just like Frankenstein, hiding its monsters in a castle, they're keeping them in water? And hey, I'm no duck expert, just throwing it out there. Leopon. Coming up again with the love child of lions, this time it made love with a leopard. Yes, you heard right. Leapons are the crossbreeds of a male leopard and a lioness. 
Male lepons are hardly ever fertile, so you won't find a wild lepon roaming around today. These are amazing creatures with mixed behavior, but leaning more toward the leopard side with beautiful patches just like leopards. But wait, they come up with this killer 20 centimeter long mane, giving a vibe of Mufasa. The first ever lepon was born back in 1859 in Kalapar, India. These lepons are only bred in captivity, just like the other love child of lions. Maybe we're wrong. Back in the 1900s, there were whispers in Africa about a spotted lion called Marozi. Some think it was a wild lepon. Confusing, right? The twist is that some geneticists think that it might be possible that lions and leopards could have been in a relationship. Nature's got its own drama going on. Bengal Cat Let's talk about another cat hybrid, the Bengal Cat. These are the rock stars of the domestic cat world. It's like having a mini leopard as your furry companion. These cool cats are a result of mixing domestic cats, including the Egyptian Maui, with an Asian leopard cat, giving them those striking leopard-like markings and a sleek, agile body. But here's the deal. Bengal cats are not your laid-back lap kitties. <laughs> nope, they're hyperactive and always on the move. These guys demand attention and energy, so be ready for an adventurous and playful buddy. Considering adopting one? Well, they're not only good with humans, they're cool with other pets and great with kids. If you've got the energy for a lively companion, a Bengal cat might just be your perfect match. Swoos. Next on our list is this swoos. Meet the swoos, not a creature from Dr. Seuss, but a real. These are exceptionally rare waterfowl hybrids born from the union of a swan and a goose. Swooses with their unique colorings can be tricky to distinguish from other swan or goose crossbreeds. The key identifiers include dark plumage and a distinctive knob at the base of the bill. For those with a keen interest in avian wonders, spotting a swoos offers an exciting opportunity. So keep an eye out for these unique creatures. And remember, it's not Dr. Seuss, but Mother Nature playing matchmaker in the world of waterfowl. Hybrid Iguana Now it's time for the Hybrid Iguana. It's not your regular run-of-the-mill lizard. This one's special. This is the result of some underwater love stories in the Galapagos Islands, Ecuador. And the first ever Hybrid Iguana was discovered in 1981. Well, how'd this happen? This happened when a male marine iguana, the sea-loving reptile, decided to spice things up a bit with a female land iguana, which resulted in the hybrid iguana. These hybrid iguanas are dark with light speckles or bands of mottling near the head and a banded body. They have a laterally compressed tail like that of their father, though they have not been seen swimming. Killer bees. All right, this is gonna be the last one. Ever heard of the Buckfast Bee? No, it's not a Scottish drink, but it's got a buzz of its own. This hybrid bee was created by a monk named Brother Adam back in the 1900s. Now, monks mixing bee strains might sound like a medieval science experiment, right? Well, Brother Adam was ahead of his time. Back then, bee populations were under attack by a parasite named tracheal mites. These little pests invaded the bees' tubes, causing chaos. Brother Adam decided it was time for an evolution party. He imported Italian bees, mixed them up, and boom! The Buckfast bee was born, resistant to those annoying mites. It's like the Avengers of the bee world, but without suits. Anyway, speaking of hybrids, if you could mix two animals, what would they be? Drop your wild combos in the comments. Let's have a look at this picture. An unknown hybrid with a face like Nutria and the body of an elephant. Sounds weird. Yes, rumors are that the scientists of Pinecrest Research Center have mixed the genes of Nutria with an elephant resulting in this. What should we call it? A Nutria font? Although we have done our research but couldn't find anything more about this mixed breed type animal, is there something skeptical that scientists are trying to keep away from us? Or are they just waiting for the right time to introduce their newly created species? What's your take on this bizarre hybrid? A scientific marvel 
or a tall tail that's grown taller with each telling. The doors of the comment section are always open. Thank you very much for watching the video. Do like and share it with your friends. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to not miss any of the upcoming amazing videos. Thank you once again.